Okay, so this is supplemental, which means that, you know, it's provided for your own enjoyment. And uh, this supplemental is titled, Why, oh why, oh why, A-N, B-N, C-N is not context-free language. And, um, and the proof is not very difficult. Um, so we are going to prove it by contradiction. Let's assume that it isn't context-free language, so there is a context-free grammar for it, G, and we are going to look on the i word in this language, namely A-I-B-I-C-I, and T-I would be the parse tree for this um, uh, generating this tree in this grammar. It's going to be important that if there are many grammars, uh, parse tree in this grammar to generate the string, we pick the minimal one, right? So the smallest one as far as the number of nodes or number of productions used. Why it required in the proof requires uh, uh, going over the proof again to see where it's being used. But let's just, you know, mention that it's needed. So let hi be the height of this tree, of ti. Now, the, the basic idea is that as we generate string, as i increases, we are generating those longer and longer string. Intuitively, the past tree have to get bigger and bigger and bigger. In particular, if hi is the height of the i tree, then this uh, sequence of the height of the tree is intuitively increasing. So it's not quite increasing because it can go down and so on. But uh, the important thing is that for every value t, if you wait long enough, you're going to find a tree that have, must have height larger than t. The reason is because if this is not true, then the number of parse tree up, uh, up to a certain height is a finite number. It might be a monstrously large finite number, but it's a finite number. But this language is infinite. So uh, that cannot be possible. So it must be that for every height we want, we can find a, a pass tree ti that is, is sufficiently large. In particular, we can pick a j such that the height of the tree is, is bigger, strictly bigger than twice the number of symbols in the grammar, which is a bit of a strange requirement, but okay, why not? Okay, how are we going to use it? So let's look on the pass tree, right? This pass tree have this, uh, uh, it's pretty high, so there is a path of length, you know, uh, a path of length that is twice the number of variables in the grammar. To remind you, in the past three, every node is marked by a variable that is uh, uh, how it's being expanded. So since the path is twice the number of variables in, in the grammar, there must be a variable that repeats twice. In fact, there must be much more than that, but whatever. There are at least uh, two nodes along this path that have the same uh, uh, name of the variable. Okay, so now we look on the subtrees of the past tree that they degenerate, right? So they essentially break the output string into five pieces, right? The part before, the first thing, the internal one before the second thing, the middle one, the one later, and so on, right? So there are those five strings, X, Y, Z, V, W, and they must be equal to the string being generated, which is A to the J, B to the J, C to the J. And here's where uh, the surprise comes in. What we are going to do, we are going to take this subtree here. Okay, this whole subtree with the first symbol, and we are just going to cut it and paste it into the, instead of the small subtree. So we are going to get the subtree shown on the right. And this is completely valid, right? This is what's written on the right is a completely valid new parse tree, right? Because uh, all the productions are legal, and it generates a much bigger string, right? Now, uh, it generates a string which is of the form X, Y, another Y, Z, W, W, uh, um, sorry, V, sorry, V, V, W. And the important thing is that it's not possible that uh, Y or V are empty. If Y and V are both empty, 
then uh, we will not be generating this gray area. This this will not be possible. This is where we are using the fact that we demand a minimal uh, parse tree because then we can have a smaller tree that generates the same string. So it must be that either, either Y or V or both, of course, are non-empty. And in particular, we got what we got is that there is a new string this x, y square, z, v square, w, that is in the language, right? And now we just need to uh, to do case analysis to argue that this is not possible. This part is tedious, but it's not especially insightful, so let's do it. Um, and the question is essentially, what does the string y and v are being mapped to? Right. So if Y and V contains both characters A and characters B, then the new string tau, since it has Y squared, is going to have some characters, a character A, some characters, character B, A and B. And that's not possible, right? Because that definitely is not in the language A and B to the N, C to the N. So that's not possible. So Y cannot contain both A and B. Okay. And now we continue in the same fashion, right? Um, right, so similarly, Y cannot contain both B and C. By an identical argument, V cannot contain both A and B, and V cannot contain both B and C, right? So Y and V both, if they con must, Y and V together must not be empty, and each one of them can contain only one kind of character, right? It might... Y might contain a triple A or a sequence of A's, but it cannot contain, it cannot be mixed. It has to be pure, pure uh, repetition of some letter. And now we, we just need to argue what happens then, right? Because um, let's assume that Y contains only A's and V contains only B's, right? But then in this string, what happened is that the new string tau, the number of A's is going to increase because we have y squared, the number of b's is going to increase, but the number of c's is not increasing, right? So, in particular, in tau, the number of a's in the string and the number of c's is not going to be equal, which is impossible. So, that's not possible, and now we are essentially done, right? Because we arguably simulate that y cannot contain only a's, and B contain only C, V contain only C, it's not possible that Y contain B's, and V contain only C's. So we, we ruled out essentially all possibilities, and it must be that the string tau is not in L, but that's a contradiction, right? Because it has a valid, uh, tau has a valid uh, pastry, so it must be in the language. A contradiction, and the contradiction is to the assumption that this language is a, a context-free language. So we prove that it isn't context-free language. So that's the lemma that we got. The language A to the end, B to the end, C to the end is not context-free language because there is no context-free grammar for it.